everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope all of you are well and enjoying this gorgeous fall afternoon, morning, whatever it is where you are. We are. It is beautiful outside. Oh, couldn't be nicer. It's probably 70 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. And, and no ACs are running. Yeah, no machines. So, well, there's one running now. I hear a car, but I mean, it just, it, we all we could hear this morning was the planet, not the machines. It was nice. It was. Well, first of all, thanks, thanks to everyone who bought a t-shirt last week. It was fun. It was fun. We had some um, early t-shirts that we put up on the site that uh, we came across through Graffiti Designs, and um, you guys liked them as much as we did. <laughs> <laughs> there were some original eyes of the very first t-shirt we yeah. ever did. There were a few I Dream of Views. Yeah. There were... Um, there were two. The sip cast, there was, I mean, just all kinds of great, you know, old t-shirts that we hadn't seen in a long time. It was so fun. I was going to say, I haven't seen them in such a long time. It was great to see them. And these were brand new. They've never been They were out. still packaged. Yeah. The so packages were a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> One was a little dusty, but yeah, I mean, it was just really neat to see them brand new and I ready know. to go. Like we had just made them. I know. They were great. So we mm -hmm. also got some of the magnet sets um, that Graffiti made years ago. And we'll figure out something to do with those soon. Yeah. We have about 100 sets, so. That's a good amount. There are three magnets. One is uh, Francine in her wild getup from the ad agency. Yep. There's the Lily. And I think there's a Kachu. Yes, the Kachu kneeling down. I think that was for Strangers in Paradise number Oh, do you have one? Yeah, but it's it's old. You have one on the following cabinet. This one's up here. This is all faded. <laughs> yeah, this one's this one's lost its color, but it was that that cover from Strangers in Paradise. Hey, I hope they didn't see me in my jammies. I don't think so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if they did, I'll replace yeah, it. Yeah, we'll have to you have to put a star over that or something. <laughs> Well, so that was a lot of fun, and we'll figure out something to do with the magnets as well. Uh, Terry's had a quiet week in the studio as he finishes serial number eight. It goes to the printer this week and should be in stores the second or third week in November. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we won't have any uh, trucking issues like we had with number seven. Yeah, really. So, That's kind of beyond our control, so we're just yeah. hoping for good. We just send them out there and hope for the best. Right. So at this point, it's a crapshoot. You know, this is, must have been what it's like when they send out the ships to find America. You just kind of hope it gets there. Yeah, just, just <laughs> like that. There's just it's no exactly way of knowing. That. Good grief. Okay, do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? I thought the ships of America was pretty good. Yeah. Is that all you've got? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I've been working on um, this book. Uh, just I started it after the sketches. So I've been doing it for the last, I guess, two weeks now. And uh, I'm just really diving back in, and it gets really intense, and I really like the book. So, you really like your book? I like it. <laughs> I like the story. You know, sometimes you you make a comic because you want to read it, and that's the case here. Okay, well, then we're anxiously awaiting number eight. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, you ready to get on the hot seat? Yes. Yeah. Okay, our first question is Have you ever considered just sketching a book, no inks? I would love to do that. Um, do, don't you think it would take longer? It would take a little longer, yes. Um, g you have to give respect to the penciling process and all the cleanup and uh, working in a cleaner fashion. Um, but there were times in Strangers in Paradise where I would have a whole section in pencil. I can think of one right now in the later part of the series. And I thought it looked fun and, and had a lot of energy to it. Um, what did so, everybody else think? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Maybe they didn't notice. I think I remember people saying, well, that was, you know, interesting, interesting. or fun, or it was nice to have. Now get back to the inky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, there's still, it's always like pencil drawings are the stepchild of ink, and ink is the thing. But I, I love the pencil because you've got the original inspiration right there. Sometimes when you're trying to ink, you get too slick. But um, I try not to do that by using uh, rougher pencils so that my inking is drawing as well. And that's what we talked about last week. 
not tracing pencil drawings. Okay, well, I hope that answered his questions. Okay, the second one is, this is also related to inking. I think because you did an inking tutorial last week, you got a lot of comments about it. Okay. How can you fix a face once it's inked? Oh, that's tricky. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> that is tricky. That's when you tear up the page and cry. But I have done it many times, and, and I cried every time. <laughs> um, usually, it's something like... If it's something like, okay, you have an asymmetrical jawline and you see it later, or you have eyes that are off, this there's always one eye that's kind of out in no man's land. Um, I can show you um, the eye thing. Uh, let's draw a face and I'll show you how things can go wrong on the face and then how to fix it, uh, especially once you're already inked. Um, I think I've probably shown you a lot about my pencil drawing and alignments. So you know what I'm looking for in a face. Once I ink it and it's not right, now what? So let's try that. Okay. Sounds like uh, you're going to maybe get past your eye problem and your head problem. I hope so. <laughs> okay. I hope everyone has a great weekend. I'll see you back here next Sunday. Okay. Hit me right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is dive in and draw this face, or start inking it, from a very, very rough sketch, which almost guarantees that I'm gonna get something out of whack. And what I usually get out of whack is the eyes. Uh, right now, I'm trying to do my best to get them to match just by my eye, you know, just by looking at it. Um, and usually I look for at least one eye space in between two eyes. And then I try to get the pupils to be looking at exactly where they need to go. And then I build the eye around the pupil. Uh, so at this point, the eyes look fine. You know, that's good. And then I do my typical um, alignment with the looking at the temples and all that, trying to figure out how to do the other side of the face. Because on this side, on the other side, I'm pulling the brush and I can't see where I'm going. My hand blocks my view. So it's a different hand movement and I always get it out of sync with whatever I did on the right side. It's just two completely different movements to get those two sides of the face going. So you just dive in and do your best. So now I have two sides of the face and the jawline does not match. It's not symmetrical. And when you put the ears on there, you can really see it. Let's go ahead and finish it out with the neck. And uh, the neck comes in uh, pretty far from the ears unless you're, um, those pencil lines are showing you what a college football player looks like. <laughs> the neck comes right out from underneath the ears if you're working out. Uh, other, everybody else gets their neck comes in uh, underneath the jawbone. Okay, uh, I'm just kind of finishing it out roughly here so we can get our reference point. Now let's put uh, some measurements on it and see what we have. I'm using the Strathmore two ply, three ply Bristol and I have to wait a little bit for the ink to dry. Okay, now that the pencil lines are gone, what do we have? So line up the pupils and then use the zero center point on my ruler and take a look and the pupils are not uh, matching on the ruler. See that? That pupil on the right, her left eye, is too far inside. And so is the entire eye. Also, the jaw line does not match. You can see where it's fat on one side and skinny on the other. And it also doesn't come to the right points on the uh, one -eighth or one -eighth measurements there. So. The eye is out of whack and the opposing jawline is out of whack and it makes the whole face look asymmetrical. And it's keeping it from being, you know, the beautiful face that you're trying for. I don't know if you can hear the Amazon truck in the background. <laughs> okay, so roughly that pencil line is where I wish I was. So I'm going to re-ink it. And at this point, because we're talking about fixing things, I'm gonna just going to hammer in there and just, you know, fix it with a hammer. 
I'm just going to do whatever it takes to make the lines match up. So I go in with the uh, white out to get rid of some of that heavy undershadow and it'll help me see the jawline clearer. Clearer, clearer. And if you're going to add uh, hair, like dark hair, you don't actually have to worry about the extra line that was out there on the jaw. The hair fixed it. So that's a lot closer. It's still two different arcs. Um, and that'll really show up if you turn the uh, drawing upside down, which I will in a minute. Okay, pulling the ear in closer because that ear was way out too. So now I'm just chasing the center line. Okay, are we going for the eye? <laughs> I'm talking myself into it. Think about what you need to do. So what I'm going to do is set the uh, pupil first. And then I'm going to ink the around the revised pupil, ignoring the old ink. And now I have two eyes on the same spot. So what I'm going to do is get the white out and start erasing the bad eye that's in the middle of there. This is getting tricky. Okay, so let's just see what I end up doing here. Okay, so you can see it's starting to go. And what, I'm, what you're basically doing now is you're painting. You're using black and white, and the white is just as valid as the black on your painting. And by the time I'm finished with this eye, there will be a strong layer of white out on there. Um, and if you look closely at it, you'll be able to see it as if it was white paint on, a, on canvas. So that's one way to look at this. Instead of thinking, oh, I wanted to do the perfect inking job, think about you want to do the perfect painting. And of course, there's going to be brush strokes and white and things like that on there. So how's that for rationalizing uh, all the work you're doing on top of your paper right now? I see the camera pull focus to my hand and, and lost focus to the, um, to the paper. Next time I move my hand out, hopefully it'll catch it. Okay, we're getting closer to having that eye out. One eye is a little more open than the other. The new eye is more open. So um, move the pupil up. It has some uh, shading from the eyelash. And there's an elegance to the original eye on the left that the eye on the right does not have. Um, part of it is that inside corner. You need that to anchor your eye. The inside corner is just as important as the outside. Don't blow it off. Um, and then from here on out, I think things are technically placed correct. And let's check it. You can see how the pupils are spot on with the uh, equal distance measuring. Now it's about making that eye as elegant as the other eye. If you want to check symmetry, you can also turn it upside down to trick your strong eye, weak eye problem. Um, this is a good way to see if the eyes are at least in line and uh, with the features of the face, but you can see that the jawbone, you can really see that difference in the jaw now that it's upside down. Um, one has more of a rounded arc, one has more of a direct arc. That is something you can fix. We're just gonna go in there in a minute and go after that jaw and make it a better line that matches the other one and also open up the uh, more direct one. When you watch uh, videos on Instagram of painters that they start, you know, just very rough and <clears throat> they just keep working the paint and the, and the canvas to bring their vision out, to bring it out of a kind of a chaos. 
And in a very simplistic way, that's a little bit what you're doing here. You're working like a painter once you decide to go in here with white out and do white and black as equal partners. The eye is getting a little more symmetrical, a little more elegant. It can be better. There's more we can do. If I start adding a few finishing touches, just a little bit, it helps to start seeing what do I need to do to fix this. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in and just block in, rough block, just hair. Um, and this is not how you would ink a comic book necessarily, but it's more like if you were just doing a painting, you would just, and you're going to have an undertone of blue, you just block it in, right? You just slap it on. And then you're going to fix it. Uh, and refine it as you go. Uh, so that's let's take that approach here real first. We're just going to try to make uh, a brunette with uh, this length hair. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, one of the good things about watching um, something progress like this is it shows, I think, to me what I've learned, and I hope it shows you, don't give up. Don't give up on a drawing. Uh, this drawing has a lot of problems. We're going to fix it. So sometimes you think, well, I'll just draw 300 faces until I get the one I want. What, or, or maybe that's not the answer. Maybe the answer is to keep working on the one face and dial it in closer and closer to what you want to see. Okay. With the rest of that blocked in, it gives me more of an idea of what kind of person I'm trying to get here. See that nostril is too far in? Everything on that side was too far in. And that's my weak eye, strong eye uh, thing that I work on sometimes. Well, my whole life is that, my whole life is a sometime in the big world of physics. <laughs> we gotta figure out a way to get the camera to, to hang focus on the paper instead of my hand, huh? Okay, let's go after the jaw. I think the solution here is I really like what's happening on the left, so I'm going to bring out the jawline on this side and make it more full. Better. And this actually improves everything else on the face. If you get the jawline to be a good, solid, um, symmetrical jawline, you have a good baseline, a good foundation for the face. Um, it'll be a lot easier to find, okay, where should the nose be? Where should the nostrils be situated? Where is the middle of the uh, brow? Those kind of things. I don't know why this woman is wearing drop earrings with uh, a t-shirt, a Saturday morning t-shirt, but it's probably I'm just doing it just to show uh, more symmet symmetry requirements. When uh, you're using this white out and it's not flowing well, just wet the brush again. That's why my brush keeps disappearing to the right. Okay. Start adding inking touches now. 
as if you were a painter starting to add some details to the rough. A little lopsided on the hair. Let's fix that. Make the neckline smoother. That's a pencil line. It shouldn't be an ink line. I'll erase that. That, you know, that um, tendon line that I put into the neck there. You don't need it. Get rid of that little animal line down the center. Using white out to make that as low key as possible. Now the jawline is a little too heavy, so I'm just going to use the white paint to lighten it up. So, um, that's kind of it. That's how I took that one drawing that was all lopsided and sloppy and all that. I just worked on it and saved it. And um, for a comic book inker, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is a, a lot of whiteout and stuff. But if you're a painter, I mean, this is just how you work. You know, and this is how you work digitally too, isn't it? You lay your stuff down, you move it, you change it, you fix it, you know. Same thing, but with black and white. There you go.